Hey guys and girls, it's Nathan Birch here from the Be Invested headquarters, catching up to talk about the economy in general. A lot of people are asking recently, what's happening to the market? Where do we see the market going? Obviously we've seen a lot of growth, how the economy works. There's lots of levers that are getting pulled from the back end. One of those things is inflationary pressures, which uh, is needed. And I think it's fantastic. Property is a fantastic vehicle, especially designed around the system of what we've got today, because inflation makes debt irrelevant for our economy to survive. A lot of people are feeling the pinch, prices are rising, my wages aren't rising, things are being coming unaffordable, et cetera, et cetera. And I think it's all part of the system that we live in. We need to understand the system more so before we understand you know, what we need to buy in the, in the system. For those of you that don't know, I actually resigned from my job in the midst of the GFC, wanted to you know, go and play around with property full time due to the fact that you know, I had a level of financial freedom at that point at the age of 24. You know, I saw that, that time in the market not to be fearful, understanding it and embracing it. Looking at the market today, we certainly don't have the GFC like we did back in 2008, 2009. You know, we're, we're left with remnants of pieces that are, that are you know, still here. And one of those things for us to be able to go through was an inflationary cycle to ensure that you know, we're doing really well. When a central bank issues money, uh, that has to flow into the economy somehow. And generally it is done by the purpose of assets. And what we've seen, for example, in Sydney over the last couple of years is a lot of construction happening, a lot of infrastructure projects happening. And what that is doing is you know, providing for jobs for tradies to be able to work on a new road to be built to go and work on a new home estate to be built, to go and work on certain things to be built. And the flow and effect of that is that those guys have more money in the bank account, they can go buy a new ute. The guys at Toyota or Mazda or wherever they're buying the ute from, they have more income coming through there. Um, and in turn, it keeps the economy uh, chugging along. What I'm feeling at the moment, and this is a very interesting thing, and I, hopefully I can explain this very simple terms. Looking at the market that we're in at the moment, the government has got, or the central banks have got their hands sort of tied because interest rates are at the lowest that they've ever been. A lot of people are scared that they'll go back up, but the real uh, issue that these central banks have, and I think it's fantastic for those that are prepared for it, is that their hands are so tied, they can't increase interest rates. So if we go back, uh, I think it was the last quarter of 2008, interest rates dropped three consecutive months by 1% or 100 basis points at the RBA. The government showed its hand when it came to starving off a recession or stopping any problems from happening. Now they did a relatively good job at that. That's the government's hand to play. If interest rates went up by 3% today, in today's economy, I think people would be uh, hurt. I don't just mean a few people, I mean a lot of people would be hurt. And it's certainly definitely not the right time to do that. And you know, I've been talking about interest rates every month to my investors and to people that are around me and sometimes in social media, just as to when I feel that rates will rise or go down. It's not a market where interest rates can go up. If uh, the, the central banks raise interest, banks, uh, interest rates, for example, the RBA, what we would see is a flow and effect to lots of other areas of the economy. And I think the government's intervention by putting APRA in place is uh, something there to starve off some of the inflation around certain asset classes, be it property. But I don't personally think, and this is a financial advice as always, you know, do your own research, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think we're gonna see interest rates go up by two, three, four, five percent. It could happen. I don't, you know, I've got a crystal ball, but the water's a bit murky in there. But I don't see uh, interest rates going up by large numbers. They might go up a quarter of a percent, a half percent, maybe one percent, and over a course of a period of time, maybe two percent. Um, but I believe that there will be cracks in that system, which will mean they'll have to come back down again. And the one thing that I have always said uh, since I was a kid, and understanding economics as you know, a 13 or 14 year old, inflation makes debt irrelevant. So we'll just go on to that a little bit more. If you bought a property for 200,000, uh, the monetary supply increases, more money goes out there uh, into the marketplace. What happens is when you go to pay that debt off, you're paying it off in tomorrow's dollars. You're going to be earning more, everything's going to go up more, and that debt will be much easier to pay off. It's not the value of your home that increases. It is not the value of the Big Mac that increases. You go to Macca's and they're now $10.35 or $11.20 or whatever for a Big Mac meal. Mid 2000s, you're paying five bucks for a Big Mac meal. It's the value of your dollar 
that has decreased uh, and you've got less purchasing power with your dollar, which has made everything else seem more expensive in real value terms. And that is something a lot of people think you should save your money, you should throw it under the pillow. That is the worst thing that you know one I believe one could do. Being too leveraged is a problem and being too under leveraged is just an equal problem. And it's important to have the right balance there. Property is one of those really, really rare sort of commodities out there where you can get a loan against it. Uh, it's a needed commodity. It has inflationary uh, values. The debt that's attached to it is deflationary and it's got a cash flow attached to that, which gets inflated as well. And that's you know, very, something very special with properties. As for my views on the market and where do I see it going, any time in this last 10 years, what has happened in this country, uh, we have seen lots of different markets rise, fall and go backwards and forwards and so on and so forth. If we look in 2005 to 2010, the Sydney market was going backwards. The prices in Sydney had gone down quite a bit. If we go to an areas like Perth, Darwin, uh, some parts of Adelaide and Queensland, in the more mining rich areas where commodities were important, in a time of inflationary pressures and whatnot, you will see commodities will rise in price. Uh, at this point in time in the economic cycle, uh, commodities aren't that as profitable to pull out of the ground. And when they become more profitable, then those areas will you know, have people head to them and then the price of the properties there will rise. At the same time those properties were rising 2005 to 2010, the Sydney market was going backwards and Queensland market was doing its thing and Melbourne market was doing its thing. The market sort of had a flip side and I'm not for one minute saying that it's going to change back to that, but there's many levers that get pulled and money flows to different areas of one's market. Uh, the thing that I found that was really amazing between the years of about 2009 and about the years of 2013, there wasn't much construction happening in capital cities. There was a pent up of demand of buyers and tenants alike. What in turn happened is rents were rising. So I, I remember seeing rents back in the day in Mount Druitt, for example, for 180 bucks a week. They ended up, you know, 350 bucks a week where they are now. And they've sort of been at that rate for a very long time. And, you know, it's a topic for another day. I expect to see rents rise in these sort of markets in the not too distant future. Do I see anything bad happening on the horizon? Uh, I think that we're very, very well placed in our economy and how our system works in comparison to the rest of the world. I do feel that globally something may happen in the not too distant future, but that is fantastic and I'm very excited by that because at a time of you know negativity out there, um, generally the governments overcompensate to ensure uh, that the economy gets to a safe place. What I mean by that is, as I said, when the GFC came, interest rates went down by 3%, it was the start of the Sydney property boom uh, where people didn't realise it at that day. And I feel that you know if we were to see some pain out there on the streets, I think lending policies would become a lot easier, a lot easier for people to get credit, and I believe that we would see another leg up on the on the on the market and increasing. The other thing that I also foresee is I've said it beforehand, I'll say it again, sometime in the next decade we're gonna see very high inflation, high inflation from all different areas. We cannot continually go along with a zero percent interest rate or very close to it, you know, one and a half percent interest rate at the central bank. Is, is almost zero percent. What is important with that, as we go through that phase, everything will get inflated. Uh, I don't talk about hyperinflation like Zimbabwe. A trillion dollars doesn't buy you a bag of sugar. There will be hard times out there for people, mainly to those that aren't prepared or haven't structured themselves correctly. Uh, from my personal viewpoint, am I still buying properties? Yes. Will I continue to buy properties? Yes. It's important to build yourself the right portfolio, the right assets under your wings and uh, arm yourself with the right knowledge to ensure that you're taking the right steps. You know, I see a lot of people get fearful out there. They'll sell off a property. You know, I've never really heard anyone that said, you know, I'm so happy I sold my property 10 years ago because they're generally upset that it's worth more. And that's completely around the system that we live in and the matrix that we're designed to be in. If you need help on this front or you want some more advice around that, you can contact us at the Be Invested headquarters, 1300 367 925, uh, or send us an email at admin at beinvested.com.au. We'll catch up soon, have an awesome day.